As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. Scott the Scots here. Ah, a good track and feed the soul. And while this might be music from the heavens, it's not gonna feed your lawn. If your yard needs some life, then you need Scott's Turf Builder. You just put it down once now, then again this summer to thicken your lawn and get it grown strong. Ooh, that's some lush lawn vibes right there. Get a bag of Scott's Turf Builder today. It's guaranteed or your money back. Feed your lawn. Feed it. Welcome to the family here on Purple Mafia. I'm your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Wygen. Purple Mafia is available on thesportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to the show. Well, it's nice to be behind the mic again, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> do, you, do, I, do I really have to cover this? Do you really want me to talk about this? This, this, this blood-curdling, awful, rubbing your... Ah, just scraping your fingernails on the chalkboard type of football game. Do you really expect me to cover this? Is it coverable? No. What's the name of the episode? I mean, I mean, there were so many things that came through my head, even midway through the second quarter. Unwatchable, unfair. Ah, okay, unfair. Well, you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's shattered confidence, man. I mean, because a lot of people's confidence is shattered at this point in time. But, see, I'm already getting ahead of myself, and that pisses me off, but that's how it goes. This is this kind of game, do you really expect any type of organization to anything? Do you really want numbers? Do you want detail play, do you, or play-by-play? Do you want detail game analysis in this one? It's unreviewable, unwatchable, unacceptable, un-everything. And I know there's many, many more important things in the world than sports. But this type of thing is just could, could just drive you absolutely insane. I mean, there's more things in the world that can make you mad, scream at the top of your lungs, especially right now as we're on the verge of World War III, if, uh, well, <laughs> if a miracle doesn't happen, pretty much, <laughs> on the verge of it. Uh, but, yeah, here we are right now, looking for our distraction, looking for something positive, something fun to look forward to. It's only been 55 years since this team won a Super Bowl. Oh, wait, they didn't win it 55 years ago. They first started existing on the planet 55 years ago via expansion. So, what is there to talk about on today's show? In segment number one, bad news. Segment number two, bad news. Segment number three, well, the only good news is the fact that how just such wonderful reaction I do get from you out there. Just the wonderful involvement you have brought to this show. That's the good news about... (laughs) Segment number three. The bad news is, well, the topic of conversation. There's really not many positive things to talk about right now. And to think, uh, just two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, when Adrian Peterson was losing against Oakland, don't you just want to go back in time and reset that and start over and see what happens from there? Maybe we beat Green Bay. Maybe we beat Seattle. And then we also take care of Atlanta, who's pretty much dead in the water. We'll talk about that in segment number two. Uh... Wow, really, that, that's about it. Do you know what today's show reminds me of? It reminds me of when you come into work, right? And then, is it ever, is it ever positive news when your supervisor, your manager, your boss, whatever the bleep their title is, he, she, it, whatever they are, whatever you want to call them, whatever swear word you want to call them, whatever positive thing you hope to call them, <laughs> uh, or those horrible words, politically correct thing you want to call them which uh, I don't even want to think about those two words, especially nowadays. Uh, But that's basically what this is. Supervisor standing right there, you know. Maybe it's 2 in the afternoon. Maybe it's 8 in the morning. Maybe it's 6 in the morning. Whatever, whenever you start work. That's what today's show is. I'm the supervisor standing right there, you know. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Hey, ready ready for work today? Okay, first of all, well, the Vikings lost 38 to 7. Yeah. 38-7 38-7 to seven against the hated, cocky, evil, okay, maybe not evil, but obnoxious uh, team that, I, I don't know, 
it's the classic throw the ball up and they catch it. It's the classic you can't make a bleep and tackle when they're running with the ball. The quarterback, the running back, the receiver, the tight end, God knows, the cheerleaders for Seattle. You might not be able to tackle them because they're wearing a Seahawks jersey, logo, colors, whatever it is. That's what kind of game today sums up as. Am I ranting? I, I guess. I'm trying not to, but how can you not come into this one with a little bit of fire, a little bit of brimstone? How, how could I not start a show with a little bit of that? After what you saw in this one. And I, of course I was a bit scared to death last week, but I still predicted a victory. I was a bit scared when I saw Russell Wilson threw for five touchdowns against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But they're not the steel curtain anymore. They're the shredded curtain. They're the tinfoil curtain. Anybody can score on those patsies, right? Well, Mike Zimmer's defense didn't look so good either. And the offense looks like... <laughs> the offense looks like jello at best. Looks like jello. You know, trying to get through like... Like a brick wall. I don't know. I don't think Jello can get it done. Can you? I don't think so. The offense didn't muster a single point in this freaking game. That, that's it. Not a single point. In fact, it was 35 nothing before Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson, you know, he, he ran back a touchdown for 64 yards. You know, after a kickoff. Okay. Uh, it was officially 101 yard. Uh, excuse me, 101 yard return. Pardon me. The kickoff was 66 yards. Who cares about the kickoff distance necessarily? 101, so he was in the end zone. At least he didn't get tackled before the 20 like he does about 90% of the time. This time it actually turned into something great. Thank you, Cordero. That's that's great. But And, and you know, that's the one good thing he does bring to this football team. But he doesn't bring anything else. And, of course, it comes at a time when the Vikings are trailing 35 nothing to my, the most hated football team on the planet, the Seattle Sea, Chicken Sea, whatever. Every single time they make a play of any kind, a simple tackle, they act like... They act like they're at a dance club, and it drives me absolutely nuts. I'm not a fan of the Carolina Panthers, by the way, either, with all that stuff. Am I too old school? Am I too blue-blooded, cold-blooded, whatever it is? Yeah, sure. That's that's about it, I guess. I guess that's what I am. I don't like... I, I, I just... I don't like the way some of these guys act when they have some success, you know? Handle prosperity with class a little bit. That would be nice. I, I've never liked the Seattle Seahawks for that reason or, or the Dallas Cowboys 20 years ago for the same reasons. Can't stand it. But as much as you get frustrated, pissed off, watching these SOBs run all over us, watching that frickin' Russell Wilson, every single move he makes, a guy misses a tackle, just can't get it done. Can't get it done. Aside of all that, what the hell kind of offense is this? It's like, I will remind you, the Pittsburgh Steelers who put up 32 points against them, you know, and, and other teams this year have put up points against the, the Seattle Seahawks. Their defense is still intact. And yes, the Vikings had a, uh, an array of injuries on the defensive side of the ball, particularly, and, and of course, just to tease us, just to mock us, two of the most important guys on that defense were in, were in their uniforms, just standing there, just teasing us. Okay, are they going to go in now? Nah, they're just going to stand there and watch the game in their uniforms. Ah, why don't they just go watch upstairs somewhere? I mean, I I don't even want to look at them if they're not going to actually be able to play. You know, you you can respect them, love them all you want. And you know what? I love Harrison Smith and Anthony Barr, but it's such a tease seeing them stand there in their uniforms, unable to play. Why can't they just take them off? You know, what, what what's the point? Especially when they're getting run in the same areas where, well, the Vikings defense would, would have been successful had they been playing. Linval Joseph... Well, street clothes or, or or whatever. Vikings gear, I suppose. A black coat with a hood on. Uh, you know, that's, that's... Seattle just took advantage of that in every which way possible. And you know what? Good on them for that, I suppose. Uh, but again, it doesn't explain the def- the offensive line. Then again, you could come back with the injuries there as well. The load holds and the, and the John Sullivans. But here we go. Here's the brunt of it that drives me absolutely nuts. You guys, you're, you're in the NFL. The, the backups, second strings in, in each case, or even like semi-first string in some cases, maybe they're platoons. You know, they play half the snaps in the game Some of the, in some of the cases. Step up and play. Just step up and play. You're, you're, you made it to the NFL for a reason. Take this opportunity. Become a legit player in the league. You don't have to be an all-star, but at least represent. No representation whatsoever. None. Zero. Zip. Nada. Drives me nuts. Teddy Bridgewater represented this Minnesota Vikings team yesterday about as well as, well, about as well as the backup offensive linemen, backup defensive players and such. Just nothing. Zero. 
my confidence in this team at this point, because it, again, what else is there to say? It was just a, an array of missed tackles, horrible calls as well. The referees were just awful the whole game. About as bad as the Vikings offense and defense in this one. But right now, how can you have confidence in this football team? How? I mean, uh, with these type of representations against Green Bay and Seattle, teams that, if, if you if you are a Viking fan, like, and you really mean it, how can you stand either one of these teams? Seriously. Unless they're playing against each other, you might have a, maybe have a rooting interest against uh, either one of them. Though I personally like to see both of them vanish in the X zone when they play each other. That would be better, quite frankly. Uh, but, I mean, I don't even know where I'm going anymore. <laughs> what was I talking about again? <laughs> But when you see this type of uh, representation, I might screw up everything here, <laughs> bumping stuff. Uh, when you see this type of representation from your team against legitimate teams who were behind you in the freaking standings, this is the best you can do. Seriously, this is the best you can do. At home. At home, really. This is the best you can do. I'm sorry. My confidence for this time, for this point in time, at this stage, is shattered right now in this football team. It really is, and it, it 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 hurts to say it. And I know there are injuries, and you're going to come out and say, "Joey, hello, no Anthony Barr, no Harrison Smith." I don't think the Vikings would have won the game with Anthony Barr, Harrison Smith in there. I don't think so. It would have been better than thirty five, thirty eight. Pardon me, to seven. But the seven points are there only because of a special teams touchdown. I'm sorry, Anthony Barr and Harrison Smith are probably not going to help with that. Maybe one of them gets a pick six in the game, and that would help things a little bit. But I just don't think, and of course Linval Joseph too, but I I just don't think the Vikings would have won this game anyway, the way it was headed. Seattle came to play, as much as I hate them. They came to play, and it was the same damn team you saw against Green Bay last year in that huge comeback in the NFC title game. The same damn team that kept driving us crazy if you cheered against them, against the Patriots, which I very much vehemently did, though it seemed like the whole country cheered for Seattle. Again, I I don't know why. <laughs> I really don't know why, but I don't understand a lot of things about people in this country. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, it just, when they play the way they did yesterday, and they played the way they did against Pittsburgh, it, it's the same stinking team that went to the Super Bowl two years in a row. The same stinking team that wiped the floor with the, uh, the uh, Denver Broncos. But so many reasons for my confidence to be shattered right now because you know, you're, you're not holding a tiebreaker against Green Bay unless you go there and beat them. The Seattle tiebreaker is over. It's dead. They have it. They have a tiebreaker. The Vikings are tied with Seattle. The Vikings are, are on the outside looking in. That's the, that's the situation right now. Arizona, no chance of catching them. That, that, whole, uh, <laughs> that whole first round bye, unless we run the table, including beating Arizona next week. Good luck there. I mean, I I hope so. I really do. But mm, uh, unless we somehow run the table, there's no chance the Vikings will win the division and get a first-round bye. And now the odds of making the playoffs are really dipping. They really are. Um, Chicago's still knocking on the door. I'm not convinced they're going to (laughs) necessarily do anything about it. But it's getting really bad. I mean, it's... When you lose tiebreakers to teams that are behind you, that's not good. To be quite simple. Yes, we beat Atlanta, but they're a non-factor right now. Tampa Bay is still hanging around, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Chicago, well, I don't think they're going to catch the Vikings. I think we're fine there. Atlanta, Tampa Bay, though, they're only two games back, and you never know. Right now, I mean, the Vikings still very likely could wind up with a sixth seed, and they and they should at this stage. But I don't want a sixth seed. I wanted a second or third. You know, I mean, screw catching the Carolina Panthers. That's not going to happen. Somebody's going to win the NFC East. Good for them. It's going to be Philadelphia, Washington, or the Giants. And if the Giants do, they're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> we know how the Giants are, though they've lost three in a row. Um, Detroit, we won't talk about that right now. Um, but, I mean, even if the Vikings do make the playoffs, it doesn't look good right now. And, and it's it's sad. I know the Vikings overachieved this year and all that, but... To see an absolutely non-entity, I mean, at least compete like the Vikings did against Denver. To, to see an absolute non-entity, though, against uh, two teams you really have to beat if you ever want to be something, to not even compete against them, it just makes me sick. And, and and that's why my confidence is shattered a bit. Bridgewater has Bridgewater has not developed this year, and it, it hurts like crazy to say it. And I wanted to put a soundbite in there, but not going to happen. There's no space. You know, like a, the momentum's over for that one, unfortunately. 
But he has not improved this year, and it sucks to say that. At the end of the day, I'm not going to give up on him because, again, like a million times I've said all season, it's hard for him to throw the football on his back or, you know, about to be thrown on his back type of thing. He had to throw the ball about 50 times yesterday. No, basically, I'm just making the number up, but he had to throw the ball away quite a few times yesterday. He's had to throw the ball away against pretty much everybody. I mean, even Oakland, he had to throw the ball away. And, of course, he was struggling on that one with a post-concussion type stuff. I won't call it syndrome, but stuff. Um, you're unable to generate any type of running game at all. Uh, Adrian, so you can't really keep the defense honest. You have to pass the ball, but everybody's expecting the pass. Bridgewater's not playing confidently. You got the defensive line from Seattle and the linebackers and the safeties just running right at him like crazy the whole game. It's a combo platter of things that just, uh, it, it doesn't add up at all. It doesn't add up to any type of victory or any type of competition. Everybody ends up sucking at the end of the day in that type of deal. The offensive line continues to be the number one uh, cause for concern for this team, but un- unfortunately, it seems like I mean, it seems like Bridgewater is not overcoming it. He is, uh, I think, he's getting a bit worse from it, and it scares me a lot. I mean, you, you hate to see a young guy with with the talent that he that he does have, even though there's some limits to his game. Uh, you hate to see a guy get get his confidence shattered, and I'm wondering if it's. If it's uh, if it's on the decline a bit, and and it seems like it could be, when you have an offensive line that's this terrible, it's not it's not good for the development of a young guy like Teddy Bridgewater, and I would really hate to see him become another Geno Smith or or, or like another Alex Smith, if you want, because color doesn't matter at all. Alex Smith, I mean, he he developed into an okay player, but never anything special. Just a game manager. Geno Smith never really developed into anything. Just nothing. Um, David Gerrard had some moments here and there. Just guys like that who, who had their limits. Uh, Chad Pennington is another guy that uh, comes up because of the lack of the throwing arm. Just He had moments, but he never really became that franchise quarterback. And I pray to God that's not where Bridgewater's headed. I, I really do. I, I would hate to see Tim Hasselbeck be right about him last year when he said he's just going to be a good backup. I, I really hope not, but... Yesterday, he kind of looked like that's that's what he is at this stage, and it, it hurts saying it. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I almost want to cut this short because what else really is there to say other than just one horrible call after another? That's other things to say. Seattle, again, back against the wall. They, they, they had to win the game. I mean, understandably, they had to win the game, but the way they just came out and did what they did, that's what, that's what hurts so much. That's what kills your confidence. Um how many times, though, did Seattle complete a pass well behind well behind the uh, the chains, so to speak, and the Vikings just simply make a tackle and Seattle has to kick the ball. And the Vikings could not get it done. Whether it was third and 19 or third and inches, they could not get it done time and time again. And, of course, of late, Seattle's got the number one um, offense on third down. They were just unbelievable. Uh, 9 of 13 on the day. Just, just 9 of 13. Yes, it's a combination of Seattle's efficiency and the Vikings' defensive deficiency. Just makes you sick. Again, just makes you absolutely sick. I, I, I don't even want to continue. I'm, I'm getting tired right now. I feel like I'm rehashing stuff. I don't know if you're tired of listening to me at this point in time. Unreviewable game, guys. Just un- unreviewable. Okay, yeah, Thomas Rawls. My God. Ugh, my God. Can't bring him down for anything. I don't know, you want to call him to Terrell Davis, Jerome Bass in his prime, whatever. Just bull rushing right through the Vikings time and time again. And Russell Wilson again. Okay, nobody's open, but guess what? Nobody's near him. And whenever, whenever somebody is, there's another spin, another move, and magically he always gets to the first down no matter what. You can never bring him down before the damn chains. <sighs> okay, rehashing again, driving you crazy. Fran Tarkin, an award. Well, some of you want to see uh, Mr. Uh, Cordell Patterson get it only because he's the only guy to uh, get anything. Uh, I'm going to give him an honorary mention because I hate him. <laughs> I, I hate him. I don't want to give him anything, damn it. I just don't. But no, thank you very much. He will get an honorary mention. I'm going to give the Fran Tarkin an award to a guy who got snake bit with the most BS call in the history of football yesterday. Who he was the only guy really giving the uh, well, okay, okay, Daniil Hunter was too. And you know what? Props to him. He will get another honorable mention. Daniil Hunter was uh, doing a good job in the pass rush for the most part. But I think Brian Robinson was the best Viking on the field yesterday for the most part. Of course, you, you can complain about all of them. Missed, missed this, missed that. But Brian Robinson did a really good job yesterday. He, he really did. I mean, he did everything he could out there. 
So I'm, I'm going to give it to Brian Robinson. He will get the uh, Fran Tarkenton um, uh, Fran Tarkenton Award. The Tavares the <laughs> Tavares Jackson. Oh boy, wasn't that beautiful seeing him again? Welcome back. Yeah, great. Welcome back. Mm. But uh, Christian Ponder Memorial. It goes to everybody. No, <laughs> I had to give the target to Mike Wallace. He finally caught a 25-yard pass. Hey! 25-yard completion to Mike Wallace. Congratulations. And, of course, it was one of Bridgewater's worst games ever. But, yeah, terrible interception, overthrowing Stefan Diggs. Yeah, there. There. I mentioned it. Yeah. It's just, whatever. Who cares, right? Um, lots of kickoff returns for Cordero Patterson. I wonder why. Hmm. Jeez. Hmm. Only two punt returns for Marcus Sherrill's. I don't know. I don't want to. I, I, I got to stop talking about it. Um, yeah, I mean, Brian Robinson, by the way, two stacks in the game. Again, with, again, the most BS call ever. Just trying to bring the guy down when he thought he, he, thought he was trying to get up being um, uh, Russell Wilson. Just grabbed the guy's legs to make sure he was actually down. And they call roughing the passer on Brian Robinson. It's just... That just pretty much sums it up right there. I mean, again, okay, so let's get to the point here and get this over with. Christian Ponder Memorial is going to go to <clears throat> Teddy Bridgewater, I guess. It's going to go to the offensive line. It's going to go to, yeah, um, Teddy Bridgewater, the offensive line and the injuries, I suppose. Um, the defensive injuries, the lack of tackling. I mean, it, it can kind of go to everybody. It, it kind of can, and my, my long-term um, forecast for this team right now is unknown. It, it's a big question mark. I, I'm not convinced this team is ready to make any type of move within the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, barring some type of 180 from uh, Teddy Bridgewater, he needs to step up again, and so do the so do guy, guys need to get healthy and all that, and other players need to step up and be better. You know, the, the, line, uh, <laughs> the offensive line needs to step up in a huge way, and of course, the, the draft, so... I, I, I don't know. It's kind of like a team effort here with the Christian Ponder Memorial. That's about it. So enough of my rambling. Let's end this and let's talk about some more stuff. <laughs> some more stuff, I guess, in segment number two with the NFC North and and a little bit of, and some NFL roundup as well, along with the pre the preview for the Arizona Cardinals next week, the next game of the year. shop on Amazon? Did you know that you can support this podcast just by doing your normal shopping on Amazon? It's really easy to do. Just go to thesportstuff.com and click on one of the many Amazon pictures. Do your normal shopping and Amazon sees that we referred you and they give us a percentage. We'd like to thank you in advance for supporting thesportstuff.com and please use our Amazon link. Now enjoy the rest of the show. Back here on Purple Mafia, segment number two, NFC North slash NF, NFL uh, roundup, basically. So I'll try to be a little bit happier here. I mean, a little bit, but there's obviously one game that's going to drive everyone crazy. Ooh, let's start with the Battle of the Bad. The Tennessee Titans beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 42-39. to That must have been a slop fest, but hey, it, was, it must have been kind of entertaining, I suppose, as well. I mean, congratulations, Tennessee. They continue to win. Denver Broncos 10-2. and Osweiler continuing to play very well in, in Denver, at least well enough. He's kind of like a much better Tebow, I guess. Okay, I, I don't know that. Uh, not really. He, he's a better quarterback than Tebow. He's he's all right. I mean, he's good enough with it when you have a defense like that team. San Diego sucks, and, and I don't know why. I don't know why. It's like maybe they just got sick of each other. Uh, I don't know. So much talent on that team. They must have three freaking points in Denver. Pathetic, without a doubt. 17 uh, to three, San Diego at home, blowing it. Kansas City beating Oakland in Oakland. They're knocking on the door of those AFC playoffs, thirty-four to twenty. Kansas City Chiefs really coming back from the dead there, and there's Alex Smith doing well. 
New England? What the bleep, man? What what the hell? At at home against Philadelphia? What the hell is wrong with you, New England? What the hell? Thirty five to twenty eight. The Patriots lose to the Philadelphia Eagles, man. Are you kidding me? I mean, okay, and I know all you Patriot haters out there, you're going to be like, ha ha, na na na, boo boo, and Carolina, ugh, Carolina fans like, ha ha, you know, we're going to have the number one record in the NFL, but uh, yeah, okay, I mean, that's fine, that's fine, I mean, that doesn't mean you're going to win the Super Bowl, they, they might, they might win the Super Bowl, but I don't know, Carolina Super Bowl champion sounds kind of weird, but I suppose Seattle sounded awfully weird too, so maybe I shouldn't really comment about that at all, huh, I mean, I, I, I don't know, I... I don't know. I like it more than the Seahawks, but the dancing stuff is getting on my nerves a little bit. They beat the uh, uh, New Orleans Hornets. No, the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans Pelicans is more like it. Uh, 41-38 in New Orleans. A shootout at the Old Corral or whatever you want to call it. It's more like a shootout at the Old Bayou is actually what it was. Not very good defense by Carolina, but when you're talking about Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints and their 9 billion uh, talented players in their offense... Regardless who's who's cheats and who does that, but nah, well, again, Greg Williams isn't there. He's in St. Louis. At least he didn't injure um, um, uh, Carson Palmer this time. Though I'm sure some Viking fans might want that, but nah, I, nah, I don't want to win that way. Just beat them, beat them at their best. Uh, but yeah, to the point. Carolina winning 41-38. They're 12 and 0. We're happy for you. I, I never thought Carolina was going to be 12 and 0. Never thought so. Pittsburgh staying alive, staying alive. Ha ha! In a big way, crushing Indianapolis 45 to 10. Just devastating. And then the classic old school matchup: Monday, Monday night football, Washington and Dallas. We'll be kicking off tonight in the nation's capital. Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Miami staying alive, beating Baltimore. I don't know who they are. I don't know who Baltimore is, or I and I don't know who Miami is. I mean, I don't know. Who the hell are those guys? I have no freaking idea. No, no idea. Broadway, the Broadway game, the Giants lose again, and the Jets are very much going to make the AFC postseason now. I, I got to think 23-10 to 10 in a very, very close defensive battle between those two teams. Eli Manning just could not get the job done. The Giants have had an unbelievable success against the Jets historically, but... I don't know. I, uh, they're struggling now, but watch out. All they got to do is win that division. And <laughs> you can kind of tell the Giants are the type of team, man, in, in my mindset, that's like they make the playoffs. They're going all the way like the San Francisco Giants. I mean, it's just kind of how they are. Cincinnati, well, hello, home field. They're probably, I mean, I don't know. Who, who's going to get the bye in the in the AFC now? Because now you got New England, Cincinnati, and Denver all 10-2. and two. So who's going to get left out of that group? And what a bummer that's going to be. Cleveland looked like Minnesota. As uh, my buddy Vince Germano kind of mentioned a little bit. Uh, yeah, oh, are they trying to be the Cleveland Browns or something? <laughs> my buddy Vince Germano from Melbourne, Australia. Over there in OC. Yep, a good buddy of mine. Of course, we've done shows together. Showtime and T-Wolves, Timberwolves Explosion. Big time basketball guy, but also likes the Cleveland Browns. And I do believe listens to the show. I do believe. I do believe. Possibly, as he likes to say. <laughs> Tampa Bay staying alive and uh, really winning a key game against the Atlanta Falcons. That is huge for the AFC playoff picture. Yeah, and um, and I, yeah, <laughs> huge win for them. Tampa Bay is staying alive. Atlanta, they're they're done. They're absolutely done. They're six and six. Tampa Bay also six and six and hanging around big time right now. They are looming large for that sixth spot in the NFC. Vikings got to watch out. You got to beat that Arizona team. You beat them. Well, there you go. But then again, do you really want Green Bay to somehow get that first round by? I'd rather see Arizona get the bye. But then again, I think we need to beat the uh, the Cardinals anyway. Cardinals can go ahead and finish 13-3. and three. Um, As long as we make the playoffs, you never know what will happen with the Cardinals. And uh, I don't know. I, I'd rather see the Cardinals win the, than the uh, Carolina Panthers, I guess. You know? I don't know. I like Bruce Arians. But, and I like uh, Rivera also, though, in, in, uh, in Carolina. I don't know. Something about Arizona. Just... I like them a little more, and they've kind of been through a lot <laughs> over the years, good and bad, lots of bad especially, but I don't know, entertaining team. San Francisco 49ers win in Soldier Field. Oh, come on, Bears, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? But then again, thank you. Thank you, San Francisco. Thank you, San Francisco. Again, another team. Who the hell are they? They're, they're, there's an urban legend. See, that that little bit keeps disappearing. It comes and goes. It's an urban legend. What happens to the urban legend every year, doesn't it? It kind of comes and goes every year. Uh, and I kind of got ahead of myself. There's one other NFL game. Buffalo beat Houston. Yay. Um, actually, quite important for the AFC playoff picture, but 
we'll kind of get back to that later when it gets closer to you know the, the end of the season I guess between those teams I'm not really watching the AFC super close just kind of the top heavy guys but uh, yeah NFC North roundup Chicago losing to San Francisco what the hell happened here Wow. Um, it helps the Vikings, yes, because if Chicago was 6-6, six and six, they'd only be two games behind the Vikings. Still very hard to catch Minnesota in that situation, but possible. San Francisco, they're not going to make it. They're 4-8, and eight, but I don't know. I mean, they're, they're a weird team. They're, they're weird. Blaine Gabbert actually played semi-okay. Not really. Terrible completion percentage, but I don't know. He got the job done. I mean, he outplayed Jay Cutler, and San Francisco's defense has been a bit better of late. So congratulations to them. They've, they've, they've stepped up a teeny tiny bit. Cutler's kind of stunk the whole game. Both quarterbacks couldn't even get to 60% completion percentage. Um, just an overall struggle, kind of ugly game. Both of them threw over 30 passes in the game too. Not really fun to watch, but Blaine Gabbert really getting it done with his feet though. He ran for 44 yards along the way and had a touchdown in there. 75 yards rushing. He was the leading rusher for the 49ers and I guess the leading passer by default. <laughs> no kidding, right? Matt Forte, very solid game, but not enough in Soldier Field. San Francisco beating the Bears. Huge, huge, huge victory. for uh, Huge loss, pardon me, for uh, the, the Bears. Nice momentum builder, I guess, for San Francisco as they try to kind of pick up the pieces, I guess, during the course of the season after just a dramatic change of uh, fate for that franchise the last couple of years. So the NFC North will, North will get wrapped up in one freaking game. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I, I just don't. Here, here it is. The supervisor's still in the room, and now he's going to tell you we're working Saturday, Sunday for the next two months. Saturday, Sunday. Oh, by the way, Monday through Friday, too. No kidding, right? <laughs> yeah, that's about what this is. Oh, screw you, Green Bay. Screw you. Screw you. Detroit continuing to build a lead, looking so good. They've been so sharp the past couple weeks now. So sharp, fast, fast month or so. Just sharp as a razor. 20 to nothing lead midway through the third quarter. Can't beat it now, Ben. I think the Lions got this thing. We're good to go. Oh, Green Bay, isn't that adorable? They scored a touchdown, 20-7. to Yeah, but Detroit will get the job done, right? No. No, they didn't get the job done. No, they didn't get the job done. And the funny part about their first touchdown, Green Bay, was how Starks fumbled the ball. And then Cobb, Randall Cobb. Oh, how adorable. Gets the gets the, Recovers the fumble for a touchdown in the end zone. Good for him. And then just right after that, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers getting it past that Devontae Adams. Detroit adding another point. Okay, woo, hopefully they can hang on here, but it's only a touchdown lead. Oh, man. or Not a touchdown, a nine-point lead. What am I talking about? So nothing really Green Bay can do with extra points and two-point conversions. It's a nine-point lead. Nah, 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 boo-boo. But, of course, a field goal would totally change everything. Mm-hmm. Green Bay then able to get it done again. Aaron Rodgers getting it done with his feet and complete passes. Very quick, no huddle type offense. And then, oh boy, Detroit again could not run the clock down with terrible, terrible clock management. Stupid, stupid Jim Caldwell, you know, not running the clock down enough. Not using the play clock to bring the game clock down. Gives enough time to Green Bay. And of course, oh, the miracle of miracles. Just like the Seattle Seahawks, every time they throw the ball in the air, regardless if they're down by 30 or up by 30, they heave the ball in the air. Oh, magically. Magically. Richard Rodgers. Rodgers and Rodgers. Rodgers and Rodgers, man. 61 yards down the field, of course. And, uh, yeah. Isn't that isn't that just great? 61 yards down the field. Mm. Rodgers to Rodgers. <sighs> Look like the Vikings are gonna have a, the Vikings are gonna have a two game lead in this division. You know the Vikings. You know Detroit beats the Green Bay Packers. They get the job done. Yeah, they get it done in Ford Field. They get it done. They get the job done. And the Vikings, you know, they take care of business against Seattle. Maybe a little scare here and there, but Seattle's done. You know, they're 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 not what they used to be or anything. They're they're not. But then, yeah. But then this happens, and then a couple of days later, that happened. You know, this and that. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Minnesota. Merry Christmas, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, but basically you can sum it up in, in two words. That's football. I mean, that's football. Everything can change in a play. One play, the whole season can change. One non-interception. One missed call. One missed tackle. 
One miracle catch, one drop pass, one fumbled ball, one pick six, and one Hail Mary. And everything changes, just everything. Tip pass, whatever it is. The whole season changes just like that. Golly, you know. Some people, I mean, that's what you love about football, but man, when it's when you're on the wrong side of it, that's what you hate about football, and that's what I've always hated about it, how it can all change in just one little play. Uh, and boy, did it change. And of course, the Vikings did not represent. All, all they got to do is beat Seattle, and they'll still have their one-game lead at least, and then hopefully we go take care of business in Green Bay. But heh, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about anything. I, I, I just don't know. So, since I don't know, should we talk about the Arizona Cardinals? And do we have to? Um, you know, wasn't it nice when the thought process about Minnesota versus Arizona meant <laughs> meant for uh, possible possible of vying for the first round bye? Wasn't that a wonderful thought? You know, Vikings had a better divisional record than Arizona. You know, and maybe we could go and get the job done, beat them in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, oh, by the way, yeah, it's Thursday night football. Just a couple of days away. That's why i got to hurry up and get this show done, even though the schedule's messing it up and making it later, and I do apologize for those of you that might be tired of that. But what what are you going to do? I mean, I, I'd like to record this on Sundays, but it just didn't turn out that way. <sighs> yeah, Arizona Cardinals, they're 10-2. and two. <clears throat> Vikings couldn't beat Green Bay. Vikings couldn't beat Seattle. Ain't no 10-2 and two here in Minnesota, but Arizona's doing their job. As of right now, on Yahoo, people, 86% of uh, the Yahooers out there are picking Arizona to win the game, and who can blame them? 86%, man. That's a lot. <laughs> I just hope the Cardinals can, can keep Seattle out of the division championship, and I, I think they can this time. Please stay healthy, Mr. Uh, Carson Palmer. I mean, if the Vikings uh, don't beat Arizona, at least I hope Arizona beats Seattle and, and Carolina. That'd be That'd be nice. And I don't really mind Carolina, but whatever. Let's get to the point here. Arizona's a great defense, a great coach, and a very, very capable offense. I like the Arizona Cardinals, if you hadn't noticed. I don't love the Cardinals, but I, but I like them. I do. Maybe I'll hate them after this game. And what the hell is Chris Johnson doing? You know, <laughs> 814 yards. Chris Johnson. Who the hell is that guy? Larry Fitzgerald back in the 1,000 yardage uh, mark again. Not an explosive guy. But it's like, look at that. Carson Palmer, Chris Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald. Is this 2005, 2006, 2007, or is this 2015? I, I guess it's 2015. <clears throat> but the Cardinals aren't, aren't messing around, are they, man? <laughs> Carson Palmer, almost 4,000 yards already. Let's just hope he doesn't throw for 3, 300 yards plus in the game because he'll get clips to 4,000 yards against us. I don't think that's going to happen, but... I don't know. I mean, Palmer is having a hell of a year. 29 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Again, like I said, uh, he's got 36, 93 yards. 3,693. Quarterback rating is 106.3. Cardinals look fantastic. And I'm glad Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Greg Williams didn't injure Carson Palmer again this year. That's that's good. Um, even though you'd like the Vikings to beat them, I'd rather beat them better uh, in, a better, in a better way than that. Uh, Arizona, <clears throat> more about... Uh, more about ball hawking and pass defense than pass rush. Their leading uh, sack, their leading sack guy, sack leader, their sack leader is Dwight Freeney, the former uh, Indianapolis Colt, but only three sacks on the year. After that, you get Marcus Golden with two and a half. Frosty, the snowman rucker, with two two sacks on the season. So, but when you look at their ball hawking, though, I mean, you got Rashid Johnson, Rashad Johnson with five interceptions, Honey Badger, Tyrone Matthew with four interceptions. And Tony Jefferson with with a couple, lots of interceptions with the Arizona defense. They're generally, I mean, their secondary is just freaking awesome. And um, well, Teddy, Teddy, please show up and play in this one. Please show up and play. You know, when you don't have a whole lot of pass rush from Arizona, this could be an opportunity for Air, uh, for uh, Teddy Bridgewater to get the job done. But at the same time. Arizona will go, could could go them into an uh, interception, and that's partially it uh, looks like what they what they like to do. I mean, ultimately, that is kind of a lot what they do like to do, and they're pretty damn good at re- uh, returning touchdowns as well. With three uh, interceptions uh, turning into touchdowns, ultimately, they've even got two safeties on the year. So that's a pretty damn good defense in Arizona. Just overall, really good. Not a trillion sacks, like I said, but they force turnovers. And they get the job done when they need to. They might give up some points. 
and some passing yards, but good golly, they, they really know how to get the job done, though, with, with the timely interceptions and their offense. is just absolutely fantastic. Again, I don't know if I mentioned Larry Fitzgerald, uh, 1,047 yards at this age, and you got Adrian Peterson playing as well as he has until yesterday with only 18 <laughs> yards on eight carries, and of course he's pissed off and said the coaching, they were outcoached, outplayed, everything. Um, I don't know about this one. I, I, I really don't. You got the uh, the after dark curse for the Vikings that's been going on for ever. It even got the 2009 Vikings, the best team we had since uh, 2000 or, or 98, by a mile, by a thousand miles. <laughs> that team couldn't go, o- overcome these late games. And the Vikings, I, I don't know. I, I mean, they haven't won a Thursday night game since, God, I mean, the 90s, it seems like. Maybe, I mean, I, I, I think they threw in some meaningless wins against mediocre teams back in the in the mid-2000s, early to mid-2000s here and there, if I can remember correctly. I don't remember if the New York Giants game, it was a night game, and I remember we won it in the Dome in 2001, but it was like, so freaking what? <clears throat> so what? We sucked that year. So, yay, we, we beat the, the Giants like a year later. Yay. So, I, I don't like the Viking success rate uh, at nighttime, and I know that's not important when you're trying to predict a victory, but it, 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 you do have to factor in a, in a little bit. But Arizona's really playing extremely well right now. They're on a roll. And when you see a team that can force as many turnovers as the Arizona Cardinals, and the fact Teddy Bridgewater, well, he doesn't throw a ton of interceptions, but he doesn't play particularly well <laughs> when he's challenged that way. Again, the, the only hope is that this time, Arizona's pass rush won't get to uh, Adrian Peterson, won't get to Teddy Bridgewater, and then he can get the job done. You just hope that you just hope that he doesn't overthrow somebody or underthrow somebody, or there's a misread. Oh no, Mike Wallace went the wrong way, or or Cordero Patterson for some reason is out there, but nah, he he won't be. I don't think I'll even think about that. It's more about Bridgewater missing somebody or Mike Wallace and him not being on the same page that could possibly cost the Vikings here. Vikings hope to win this game is obviously a pass rush and uh, guys being healthy. You need Harrison Smith, Anthony Barr, and Linval Joseph. All three of them need to be healthy and ready to go. But how healthy are they going to be going into the game? That's going to be a huge problem. Carson Palmer is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL again. He's looking like the the, the good version of Paul Palmer pre-ACL with Cincinnati many years ago back in 05 uh, and, and before that. He looks so good right now. He's, he's playing so well. I mean, absolutely fountain of youth over there in Arizona. Kind of like the Phoenix Suns. Seem like guys go there when they're older and they play way, way better. The Phoenix Suns, Steve Nash and Shaq and Grant Hill, they all played better. Something about Arizona, I don't know, makes me want to move there. It really does. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. A lot of things make me want to move there, by the way. It's not necessarily the Cardinals, but, oh, man. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think the Vikings win this game. I think the Cardinals are a better team right now. I think they're more equipped. I think they're on a mission, and they're going to win that division, the AFC West. I have to pick the Cardinals to win this game. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you really think the way the Vikings played against Seattle, they're going to go into Arizona on Thursday night just a couple of days later and win? And if they do, they deserve to make the playoffs big time, and they, and they probably will at that point. Absolutely deserve to make the postseason if the Vikings defeat the Arizona Cardinals. They still may they still may make it in anyway, but it won't be the prettiest finish to the season at that stage. Um, the Vikings will probably end up finishing like ten and six if the Vikings, if, if they lose to Arizona. But they beat them. Who knows? Maybe eleven and five is still possible. But mm, I don't know. Right now, I can't pick the Vikings to beat this team. I think they're going to make big plays, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see an interception or two in this game. Unfortunately. The way Bridgewater's confidence has been dropping. The the only hope is that the old, the old line plays better against, again, a team that doesn't blitz the quarterback all that much. Though there's a... <laughs> it's a very rotating defense, though. Even though there isn't a guy with a trillion uh, sacks, there's a trillion guys with a sack or two on the season. So that's the one thing. Kind of kind of Zimmer-like a bit there with the, uh, the Cardinals. So... <laughs> Can they protect Bridgewater? I don't have enough confidence that they will. And, I, and even if he does throw the ball, will it will it get to where it needs to be? That's why I think the Arizona Cardinals, to make a long story longer or shorter, are going to win the game, unfortunately. I'm going to go with something of the likes of... <clears throat> I'm going to go with 27... 27 to 20. 27 20. Arizona's going to beat the Vikings, unfortunately. Hope I'm wrong. But I don't think I will be. I think the Cardinals will get an interception or two in the game. 
I'm sure the offensive line won't be that much better. They'll, they'll, they'll look a little better, probably, against this team, hopefully, than Seattle. Hopefully. Uh, Bridgewater will probably pass for a few more yards in the game. I think he'll be a little bit better, but I, it won't be enough. I think the Vikings defense will be better, but again, it won't be enough. I, I just think Arizona's got a great offense, and they'll get the job done here against the Vikings. The defense is going to have to be unbelievable to beat the Arizona Cardinals. It's all about the Vikings defense and, well, establish the run just a little bit here. <laughs> Ultimately, if the Vikings win the game, it would be Adrian Peterson getting over 100 yards and the Vikings defense just you know playing like the way they're supposed to, playing like the way they did against Atlanta. It's going to have to be something like that, just stingy, physical, knocking the ball away, that type of stuff. That's the only way the Vikings will beat this Cardinals team. But until then, I, right now, I can't pick it. I don't know who's going to be healthy. I don't know who's going to be ready to go in such a short amount of time here. Um, and I don't know whose confidence is going to be where it needs to be going into that week. So there it is. 27-20. That's it. Fan interaction after this. Yeah, this message for Joey and Purple Mafia. Brent Jacobson here, calling from the bowels of TCF Bank Stadium. Dude, did you even catch the number of that truck that just ran us over? Ish. I'm sorry, but if we had we lost by a score, maybe then I could blame the rest. But we got our butts kicked. That is not the rest's fault. We flat out played like crap. Dude. I didn't get to see very much of it because I was watching the crowd, but it, I can tell you that it, I had a bad feeling coming into this game because we always seem to have trouble with mobile quarterbacks. And then, not to mention, we lose, what, Barr and Smith? And we were down Joseph? Well, on to Arizona. Let's go Vikings. Catch you later, Joey. Keep up the good work. Bye. And I thank you always for that call in, Brent Jacobson. Really appreciate it. And that really summed the whole game up in a nutshell right there, didn't it? And a lot of passion, a lot of frustration. Basically a perfect call for the, for this game. Perfect. I mean, it really couldn't have been a better call. He summed everything up completely. And then literally the way, it, the way he ended the call, I was just like, well, I guess it's on to Arizona, Skull Vikings. And you know what? That basically reflects the thoughts of all of us here in Minnesota, experienced and and, and rookie Viking fans, basically, right there. So, great call. So good that I can't, that he took the words right out of my mouth. And, yeah, I, I probably talked a little too much in that second segment anyway, didn't I? So, let's get to you guys also here on the Facebook page. To look up the Facebook page for Purple Mafia, simply go on Facebook in the search bar, type in Purple Mafia, Minnesota Viking Show. If two, if two choices pop up, click on the one that is company, not group, or page, not group, and click the big like button at the top of the page. Join the page, comment anytime, in-game, uh, after the games, anything like that, all, all the way during the week is also very much welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> Justin Mayer Henry in the in the in-game thoughts, just very brief. I'm going to bring this one up because it's classic how he said it. He simply says, I need a woman here in Colorado who is a Viking fan, so I've got someone to cry on with days like this. And that's pretty much, a, that's pretty much about right. So let's get to the post-game thoughts. And there's quite a few this time around. I'm sure <laughs> lots of opinions coming out. Justin Mayer Henry has a picture of somebody with a magnum or pistol. It looks more like a magnum to me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> with a gun to the head, <laughs> basically. That about sums up the game as well. Patrick Grant won the Gold Star very recently. Justin Mayer Henry has a couple this year. Uh, but yeah, Patrick saying that word summed up the game today. Horrible. No other word to describe it. First place was good while it lasted. Yeah, very much so. Yep, very much so. Brett McCarthy says, need a, need an offensive line for starters. Three defensive starters hurt doesn't help either. Yeah, it was pretty damning. It really was. And that's what, yeah, that's pretty much about how things go there. Uh, Justin Mayor Henry saying, I just want to see one bowl before I die. I'm 31, so there's still time, I hope. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That's a star candidate. Mar uh, yep. Justin Mayer, and he's definitely a star candidate today. Mark Carlson says, ha ah, that's funny. It's funny and true. It, it really is. I mean, I, I want to see a bowl game before I die, too, and I'm 36, so there you go. 
Brent, uh, Brent Jacobson saying the Cardinals are probably licking their chops right now after that debacle today. Mm-hmm. Gerald String was saying, well, I guess Cordero gets the Fran Award. That should tell you how our day went. And, yeah, it's like, yep, and Justin Mayor Henry agreeing. It pretty much, he, he pretty much, well, he, he wound up with an honorary mention just because I'm a mean guy, right? Just a mean guy and I hate Cordero. <laughs> but also, you know, Brian Robinson played pretty well, I think. For the most part, for the most part. He, he gave us hope early on, I guess. Gerald String saying, I felt our identity was run the ball and stop the run, which didn't go over very well today. In fact, yeah, it was the exact opposite, it wasn't it, Gerald? Uh, he says, I don't think we're legitimate playoff contenders yet, and I think Seattle is kind of, has kind of exposed that. Yep. I know the O-line pass blocking is horrible. True. All that Teddy's, or through all that, pardon me, all that Teddy's going to have to find a way to either get rid of the ball quicker and start to throw some receivers open. I know he can do it, but he just needs a little help from the O-line. And yeah, you know, that, that's the hope. Because I think Teddy Bridgewater's confidence has been shattered a bit with this offensive line getting his, well, luckily not getting his bones shattered the way things have been out, uh, have been going on with uh, the pass protection pretty much all season. Gerald continuing again saying, last comment, I've been watching what, te- what great teams do as far as personnel. Pull up the Patriots roster stars. Two players make pretty good money and are very consistent. Otherwise, you don't see a lot of big names with ridiculous, huge salaries. Not for the Vikings. $10 million for Mike Wallace. Patriots would not have done that. Get two old linemen for that. Yes, I know numbnuts Cordero had a big run today, but do you remember how we, how we ended up with that train wreck? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Trade three draft picks to who? Oh yeah, the Patriots. Mm-hmm. You can't buy your way into prosperity in this league. Packers, another team that is well-managed. Draft players that have a good work ethic. Never pass up on a guy that can play the O or D line. Linebacker. I mean, or linebacker, pardon me. They will pay you dividends without breaking the bank. And man, that was spectacular. What a what a <laughs> uh, super-duper star candidate for Gerald String there. Brent Jacobson says, after games like the Seattle game, I hate to say it, but it almost looks like Teddy has regressed, not improved from year one. At this point, he's looking more like a Trent Dilfer, not a Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, etc. And our defense isn't as good as the 2001 Ravens yet. I'm not ready by any means to give up on him, but who I'm ready to give up on is both Wallace and Patterson. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and Wallace finally actually made a 25-yard catch, so come on, don't give up yet. It's, it's only week 13, 14, whatever the heck it is at this point. 13, 14, copyright Dan Cole, right? <laughs> Dave Hickey, also out of Iowa, like Mark Carlson, says, Sorry, I'm sure this won't make it on time, but it did. It did, because it was uh, because the show's been delayed lately. Tuesdays, mostly. <laughs> Mondays and Tuesdays, um, because of uh, insane schedules and such. Uh, he says, but I was on the road pheasant hunting, which was a loss, too. Yep, so basically he's saying he didn't catch much or, or anything, unfortunately. Uh, he says, I taped the game, but there's no reason to watch it. After a performance like that, I agree with Brent. Teddy is Mr. Checkdown. No time to look down the field because of a shitty O-line. Sully is out, but how good is he going to have to... How good is he going to be after multiple snap surgeries on his back? Even probably not good. I was worried about this game with a mobile quarterback, Wilson. Yep, we don't seem to play very well, but I gave, but I gave us more of a chance than against the Cardinals in a short week. Just saying this could be a very... This could be very bad. After the way we played against Seattle, we are far, yep, from from the championship team. We will be lucky to be a playoff team. Enough said. I'm so depressed. I don't even want to think about it anymore. That's another star candidate. That's enough. Wow. I mean, you guys have been fantastic, man. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Justin Mayer Henry wrapping up this part of the Facebook page saying, As soon as I saw saw the offense produce nothing on the first couple drives and Barnsmith went out, among others, I knew we were in for lashing. Yep. Yeah. I, I did too. I, I really did. I had a bad feeling about it indeed. Pardon me. Got a sip of a little coffee here. So, I believe there's probably a couple of posts from, from Ali. Yes, sir. I'm posting a lot. Yeah, Brent Jacobson with some pictures and such. Uh huh. Yeah, a lot of these are pretty. Yeah, Tony Coleman posted one. Yeah, Mark Carlson was saying there's smoke in Detroit tonight. And man, I wish, you know, it was going so well, wasn't it? It really was. Uh, Tony was saying that didn't end up well, and no, it didn't. It's, it sucks. 
Uh, Ali posting a picture. Throwback Tuesday. Vikings beat the Seahawks 35 to nine in 2009. Remember that? Remember that? And th- and that was one of the weeks that I didn't actually record a show because I'm, I was doing lawn cleanups on the Sunday, and back then I didn't. I wasn't able to watch back the game or you know catch up on things such such like that. Man, I mean, <laughs> and that game was like the other way around. How it was like kind of too easy. It was one of those basically. You could say. That was a really wonderful memory. It was real nice being on the right side of Seattle. Tony Coleman was saying how, truth be told, hated <laughs> hated the trough. The up all the uh, U.S. Bank Stadium's men's rooms officially trough free. There'll be stalls and of course purple uh, the little bricks, the tiny little not bricks tiles on the wall. I like that. Very cool looking in U.S. Bank Stadium. Tony Coleman also was saying one of these was called one was not Packer bias and yeah one <laughs> one face mask uh, uh, face mask. In the Detroit game, late night Detroit game against uh, it was it was done to Rogers per se from Detroit, allegedly it doesn't doesn't look like one, but I, I guess. And then one with Teddy Bridgewater. It's clearly the hands were all the way in from the Packer defender all the way in Teddy Bridgewater's helmet. I don't know. And of course the the, <laughs> the Rogers one was called one wasn't. Brent Jacobson posting the same thing as well. So true. Brent Jacobs another picture saying Packers fans at halftime of Lions game. It was a gun in the mouth, but unfortunately Detroit fans were doing the same thing later. Um, then there's another one, Packer fans after the Hail Mary stuff all over the place. The guy looked like he spoiled, uh, spilled beer all over himself and such. Went crazy. <laughs> Al Ali posting, revisiting the, the Harvin trade between Vikings and Seahawks. That's a yeah, that's a pretty good article. Always good to catch up on these. Uh, also, another one, Minnesota got throttled by CII Seahawks. Another article from Ali on there from Pro F- uh, Football Spot. Both of them are from Pro Football Spot. Wonderful website as well. Thank you very much, Ali. Keep posting those. He also posts on the uh, Purple Press Box uh, Facebook page as well. That's Sebastian Balls' is a YouTube version of, of like a Purple Mafia type of show. Minnesota Vikings like video podcast, you could call it. Really, really worth it. Look up Sebastian Balls on YouTube. Or you could probably actually just look up Purple People Press Box in the search bar on YouTube and you'll find him on there. And go ahead and subscribe to his YouTube channel. More than worth it. And I say this probably every show. Can't wait to have Sebastian back on this one because it's uh, it only makes the show better. It really does. Like he has so much to this show onto the Twitter page at Purple Mafia Show at Purple Mafia Show of course one word Mad Martin out of Scotland saying we so need a win today after Thursday's game keep the slackers in their second place yep yeah in their place of second that is um mm -hmm. so painful indeed how things did turn out Mm. me and him were having conversations back and forth Saying horrible first quarter, players going down, and we are on a short week. Yep, that's the thing. Play after another being injured. The refs has not helped us. Total BS. Games, yep, games, the games that are big for us, and we are not ready for prime time. Next step to get a win over a big team and a signature win is needed. Yeah, I mean, his refs are complete BS. You can feel in the you can fill in the blanks. Yep, basically they're complete BS and then f bombs and such. <laughs> Uh, he says, with AP back, TB, Teddy Bridgewater looks terrible. Our O-line is too easy to read. Time to build behind Teddy Bridgewater and see what we have at quarterback with AP. Not good. Yeah, I mean, un- unfortunately. Mm. Okay, a couple more here. Mad Martin saying, without AP, Teddy started to look good. Last year, this year he's having to play with AP strength, which does not work to TB's strength, so... Yeah, basically AP strength. Yep, which don't work to Teddy Bridgewater's. Yeah, it's like a totally different offense because of that. And Norv doesn't look good because of it. It doesn't make Norv look good. A lot of people are complaining, questioning him right now. And Teddy Bridgewater, a different. Just he, he's different than last year. You saw yardage last year. You saw potential last year. Not really seeing it right now, unfortunately. And you were seeing it on occasion during the course of the season. The Detroit game, Stefan Diggs' his breakout game. What an awesome one that was indeed. Bridgewater was fantastic in that one. Was good here as well. Dang it. Anthony, uh, Anthony Carlson, Antonio Fett saying, Terrible Vikings loss. I'm still wearing my Vikings hat. People are staring at me like I got something on my face. And that's mean of them. <laughs> uh, luckily, we are 8-4 eight, eight and four still. And, but I'm not drinking any purple Kool-Aid today. I refuse to drink any purple Kool-Aid right now. I mean, it's they don't deserve it right now after a performance like that. 
show up in prime time, show up in any time when it's a big team. It was a noon game, so it wasn't in prime time. It was just a very important game. You took care of Atlanta in Atlanta. That was great, but then you come back and lay an egg against the Seattle the way you did. Just, I don't know, man. Mm, devastating. Devastating in the way the Vikings laid an egg against the hated, arrogant, cocky SOB Green Bay Packers, which, again, are, which mirrored the Seattle Seahawks in pretty much every facet of the game. The annoying mobile quarterback, the cockiness, the arrogance, the... Ugh, the arrogance from all all facets of that franchise, Packers and Seattle Seahawks, <clears throat> the fan bases as well, <laughs> in both cases, can't stand them, I don't know how anybody really can, like when I see people all over Facebook with Seahawks shirts and jerseys, especially last year and the year before, I, I just wanted to scream, I, I really did, I, I can't stand it, what, what's up with a bandwagon jumping on a team like that, especially with their arrogance and stupidity, I can't stand it, so... With that off my chest, well, hmm, it's going to continue to probably be a warm week, apparently, and it'll probably start to cool down a bit next week. Yay, there's my little mini forecast. I like to talk about the weather a teeny bit at the end, because it's like, why not? Looks like we made it to right about an hour this time around, not an hour 15. Because, well, despite the fact there was a lot to say on Facebook and Twitter, I always love what Mad Martin and Dave Hickey and Brent Jacobson, Justin Mayer Henry, Gerald Sring... Oh, man, you guys are so good. Love, love all of you. Brad McCarthy, I, I could just go on and on and on and on. Love you guys. Missing the Malcolm McSweens and uh, Anthony Batista out there. Anthony from L.A. Miss you a lot if you're still listening. So just thought I'd give you shout-outs. Even all the way back to Jason from Delta in Iowa, I believe it is. Hopefully he still listens. I have no idea. That was many, many years ago now. He was actually the first ever caller on this show way back in the 2009 season. Miss him a lot. Tony Coleman also. Good shout-outs. But before I do forget, I better pass out the Gold Star, Silver Star, Bronze Star. So I hope you guys didn't think I did forget. The Gold Star today, I'm going to give it to Brent Jacobson with a great call. His dedication to this show. Always kind words to say. Really thank you very much. But a huge, huge, like, <laughs> Silver Star that's basically... It's gold-plated silver star for <laughs> Gerald String. Unbelievable, unbelievable comments on there. Uh, just on the money, right on. Love what you had to say there. Dave Hickey and Justin Mayer Henry will pick up the bronzes for this week. I want to thank you guys so much for your participation, your passion. Huge comments, a huge just intelligence, uh, passion for this for this team, for this show. You guys bring a lot, and you really do help this show, you, you you really give me the energy to do it each and every week during the season, and I gotta probably do this more in the off season than I do. It's just I get so worn out from this and that, and and doing other shows and and other jobs and all that garbage. So sometimes it's hard to do off season shows, and I get tired from the week by week grind. Sometimes by the end, you know, it's like it's it's fun to get into basketball and hockey come come February, March, and all that stuff. But um, We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we when we do get to it. So, Especially free agency and draft. That's more than awesome to talk about. So again, just want to thank you guys for your continued dedication to this show. Please do tell a friend if you could. And if and others out there that have an iTunes account, please rate Purple Mafia on iTunes. Give it a nice positive rating. Give a review if you'd like to. It's appreciated. Say positive things about it. Even something you'd like to see improved is always welcome. As long as you don't give me a, like a one or two star, that's kind of some BS right there. <laughs> Though, then again, we all, are right to, we all have a right to our opinion, don't we? So, it is what it is, indeed. So, I want to wish you all a nice, happy, safe week, and go Vikings in, in, in just a matter of 48 hours or so. Take care, everybody.